Hi, my name is Josh with NorthshoreCommercialDoor.com. Today we are going to discuss uh, the Zap motor assemblies and a few how-tos. Uh, we do receive uh, quite a few questions on how to replace the belt, um, the bushings, and also replacing the motor gearbox, which is one piece on the motor assembly. So today I have here in front of me one of the uh, different Zap motor assemblies. This happens to be the 800 series unit, which is the light duty commercial unit. And uh, what we will be going over today will follow suit with any of the Zap commercial model operators, no matter the age, the model uh, of the unit itself. So the first step in doing any of these replacements, uh, the belt, the bushings, and or the motor gearbox, um, which are the basically three consumable items of the motor assembly is uh, one of the biggest questions we get is um, do you have to take the motor assembly off the door shaft to do this and the answer is yes uh, you do have to remove the motor assembly from the door shaft um, bring it down to a workbench tailgate etc um, to be able to replace these three um, items um, so with these app I'll kind of configure here in front of you uh, when it's mounted up on the door shaft. You have your torque arm bracket here that's holding it to the end bearing plate or horizontal track mount. You'll want to disassemble that um, and then that will allow you to um, loosen up your two set screws. Sometimes you'll have a quarter inch keyway in here if it's a solid shaft. And once you loosen the two set screws, then you'll be able to slide this off the door shaft, whether it's on the right hand side or the left hand side. And then bring it down like I have here on the workbench today, um, which then will allow you to start the disassembly process. So uh, to make this easier, as we will be moving this around on the workbench today, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the bolt, uh, which these bolts that we will be loosening and tightening today they are 10 millimeter so they are metric so i've just removed the torque arm and getting that out of our way will make it much simpler for us to uh, further the process here of disassembly um, so you'll see on the one side with no motor you have three 10 millimeter nuts and uh, this is the same even on a medium duty unit if it is a high power which stands for um, or HP rather, excuse me, which stands for high power. Um, those models have a couple more of the 10 millimeter nuts as it's a larger plate. Um, I've already uh, uh, pre-loosened these with a 10 millimeter wrench and socket just for video purposes. Um, but what you'll do once you get those loosened, uh, just remove the nuts. And once you get the three nuts removed, it will allow us to remove the plate that is actually holding this motor assembly together. And with the plate removed, you'll notice it exposes our bushing. Um, there is two. And the other one you can see on the flip side here, the white colored bushings. And your model, if it's older, it may have a metal ball bearing. Um, nothing out of the norm. Those can be replaced with the new white colored uh, bushings. So we can still replace the metal ball bearings if those have seized up or failed on you. Um, as you can see now with the plate off, it does expose the belt pulley and we can simply now just pull the pulley out of the frame and that will allow us to take the belt off. And there is a wide range of belt sizes. So if you do need to replace your belt, um, they have printed on the flat side of the belt an AX two digit number. And uh, if you can provide that to us, uh, we can provide you with a replacement belt. Um, worst case scenario, if that information is worn off on the flat side of the belt, which does happen over time, um, you can give us a call if you have a tape measure in hand we can size up over the phone the motor pulley, the drive pulley, and a couple other uh, notating features of the motor assembly and uh, we will be able to tell you what belt needs to go back on here. Um, but as you can see now if we have our new belt uh, we can reverse the process and uh, put it back together if that's all we need to replace is the belt. Um, back to the bushings 
If we need to replace the bushings, or in your case, if it's an older unit and it's a metal ball bearing, uh, for the bushing or metal ball bearing that's on the drive pulley, um, you will need to loosen the three millimeter set screws and you can utilize a three millimeter Allen wrench to do that. Uh, if you still have the one that came with the operator new in the box, that's what I'm using today. That will allow us to remove the two set screws and uh, the 5 16 nuts surrounding those. If those are tight, of course, you can use a wrench to loosen those and then turn those out. And in turn, that allows us to slide the bushing off the collar of the drive pulley. OK, um, and then also on that plate that we originally removed, we can remove that particular bushing as well and um, replace that. Um, the third item I wanted to discuss today is because we also uh, get questions on is the motor itself. Um, how do you replace the motor gearbox? Um, it gets a little cumbersome, um, a little overwhelming to start with, but basically it's uh, fairly simple. Um, you'll notice the motor pulley is covering the three 10 millimeter bolts. These are fine threaded bolts that are holding the motor and gearbox to the plate. Um, so what we need to do first, and in some of your folks' case, you may have a Phillips head screw here holding this motor pulley on. Um, this happens to be a newer model, so it does uh, utilize the three millimeter Allen wrench. And um, so either a Phillips head screw, three millimeter Allen wrench, uh, you can turn that screw out. On the older models, you will have a flat fender washer or flat washer as some folks call it, and a lock washer. And in this case, with a newer one, we just have a flat fender washer um, underneath that Allen bolt. And then you can simply pull the motor pulley off the motor shaft. Um, if it's been on there for a while, um, you may have to use a small wheel puller to pull this off the shaft. Uh, very rare, but um, if it has seized onto the shaft, you will need a small wheel puller to remove that. Um, once you have the motor pulley off the motor shaft, that allows us to take a 10 millimeter wrench or socket and loosen these bolts. And that will allow us to remove the motor. And I will show you here, once we get the three 10 millimeter bolts loosened, that motor will just come right off the other side. And if we're needing to replace the motor gearbox, um, it be simple for us to put that right back on. And now you can kind of see why this is much simpler um, to do, bringing this down off the door shaft and working from a workbench or tailgate, if you will, uh, to complete this process. Um, it'd be kind of difficult to do up in the air um, with this still fastened to the door shaft. Okay, so we're turning out the last 10 millimeter bolt. And once we remove that, you will see that the motor gearbox piece comes right off of the plate. And this is the motor gearbox piece uh, we are talking about. And um, in some of your models, you may have a black colored motor, red colored motor, um, but at any rate, no matter what style or model you have, the process is still exactly the same. Um, and when you get, uh, something I'd like to mention too, on the smaller motors such as this one here, the 800 series, uh, we do get the concerning question of, well, when I got my new motor, the holes are not threaded. And they're actually made with no threads on purpose. The, the uh, three 10 millimeter bolts are designed to self-thread back into those three holes. So don't be alarmed if uh, you have your new motor gearbox and you look inside the holes, your old one's threaded, your new one's not. Um, that's actually um, purposely done. So now that we uh, have the motor gearbox off, um, we can go ahead and uh, grab our new motor gearbox if that was the part that we needed to replace and uh, begin the reinstallation. One thing I would like to note is obviously, as you folks saw here, when you take this apart, you do have the issue with the bolts coming back out of the holes and the spacers coming off of them. Um, so there is one bolt, one spacer um, that you should put back or need to put back uh, before you put this motor back on. And that's this one right here. 
Um, if we forget to put this in before we assemble the motor um, to the plate, then when you get so far, you'll find out that you can't get this back in due to the motor being in the way of that. So uh, you wanna make sure you get this threaded bolt back in there first. Um, you can even throw the spacer on there. Kind of a little bit of added weight to it helps hold it back into place while you're assembling the motor. And on the 800 series, the light duty version, that is the only model that has two sets of three holes. The three mounting holes, as you can see here, there's two sets of three. So a total of six holes. You do want to make sure you get it back into the original set of three holes. If we fail to do that, and you will notice as you're putting it back together that um, you will have it in the incorrect set of three holes by finding out that your belt is either now uh, not able to reach both pulleys or you will find after the fact once it's reinstalled and you go to tension the belt that the um, belt will not tension as it originally did and uh, will cause belt slippage so it's crucial to make sure you get the motor assembly gearbox piece back in the same set of three holes and I'm just going to utilize my 10 millimeter wrench to tighten these back down. You can always take a black sharpie as well and mark what three holes you've removed these bolts from. Just as a double check here. This one's so new and I'm able to see where the bolts originally were. So with these uh, bolts tightened back up, we can go ahead and proceed to putting our keyway and motor pulley back on the motor shaft. Um, you will find that you have a half moon key. It's literally shaped like a half moon. And the back portion or the curved portion of the keyway goes back into the motor shaft first. And then uh, when you take your motor pulley, these, uh, some of these motor pulleys will have a recess cut out on one side, the other side flat. So you wanna make sure there again, flat side of the pulley down, recess cut out on top, and that is with some of the motor pulleys. Um, there, there are other motor pulleys where it's flat on both sides, so um, in that case it wouldn't matter. I'm just going to line up the half moon key with the cutout of the pulley and taking a pointy, either your Allen wrench to kind of push that keyway back in allows me then to slide that motor pulley back down on the motor shaft. So we're all the way back down. We can take our flat washer, lock washer, um, Phillips head bolt, Allen head bolt, uh, whatever your original motor assembly came with, and go ahead and secure the motor pulley to the motor shaft. I'm gonna utilize my three millimeter Allen wrench to tighten this bolt back down. Like so. And you do want to make sure you get that securely tight there. Okay. Um, now we are down to placing our drive pulley back into the motor assembly plate. You want to make sure that you get your set screws back in and uh, you can leave the nuts loose around them for now. Uh, but with the set screws back into the collar of the drive pulley, that will prevent this from sliding off the pulley as we reinstall it. You want to make sure that uh, when you reinstall this into the motor assembly plate that you get the set screws. Notice no set screws on this side. Back on the same side as the motor. So you can see here set screws on the same side as the motor gearbox and no set screws on the opposite side. And now we are ready to reinstall our belt. Um, it's always a good idea to even watching the video in case you have a motor assembly that may be older um, than this one or a different model. Um, it will be very similar, but you, it doesn't hurt to take a picture with a cell phone or a camera uh, before you disassemble these items to make sure that you're getting it back in the exact same way that it came off. So in this case, I have the belt going around both pulleys in front of the white tensioner pulley and in front of this standoff here. So, um, so now that we have the belt back on, uh, we're going to reassemble the last piece here to the motor assembly. And this is the outside plate that we originally took off. 
and um, obviously we have our bushing in there still. That just presses back in. Um, but I find it easiest to take your last two threaded bolts and get those put back in now. Um, if you recall, we put the first one back in prior to fastening the motor assembly, or excuse me, the motor gearbox back to the plate. And we can slide our spacers back onto these bolts and grab our plate and then just line up the three holes to these three bolts and also fit the bushing back around the collar of the drive pulley and all at the same time here. And once you get one or two through, it's a good idea to go ahead and grab the 10 millimeter nuts. Don't necessarily tighten them down too tight now, but that'll help everything stay together as you get the last one back through the plate. And then our last 10 millimeter nut. And keep in mind that the bolt heads will turn as you tighten these back down, so you'll wanna make sure to have a 10 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter wrench, and tighten them down together so because they will turn on you. And once you have um, those three nuts and bolts tightened back down, then you're ready to take your torque arm that you originally took off and thread that back into your threaded hole at the bottom of this plate. And that will just get you ready to take this back up the ladder or lift and slide it back onto the door shaft and refasten it. Um, one last key note, um, when you slide this back onto the door shaft, um, whether it's on the right hand or the left hand side, you always wanna make sure that the motor itself, the motor, whether it's silver, black, red, it always goes farthest away from the door. So in other words, if we're putting this onto the right side of the door, we don't want to slide it on this way because the motor's closest to the door. It's always the motor farthest away from the door and that way you'll know you're getting it back on correctly. Um, and then when you slide it back onto the shaft, you want to make sure that you fasten it securely with your torque arm to the end bearing plate or horizontal track mount wherever you've chosen to fasten it to. So you'll tighten this, you'll tighten this, and once that's done and secure, then you can tighten your set screws to the shaft or keyway depending on if you have a hollow or solid shaft. So once again, always tighten it to the torque arm, to the door bracket first, tighten it to the shaft last, and that in turn will allow the two pulleys and belt to drive true. Um, if you reverse that process, what can happen, hard for us to see with the human eye, but it can cause the belt to drive untrue. You'll have premature belt wear, and even sometimes, with the white tensioner pulley design, it can cause the belt to roll or even come off the white tensioner pulley. Um, that uh, pretty much covers uh, the disassembly of a ZAP motor assembly. There again, whether it's a light duty, medium duty, or the HP high power model. Um, keep us in mind if you folks have any questions when you're doing this, um, feel free to give us a call. We're always available, send us an email. Again, my name is Josh. Any one of us in the office can help out. Um, our phone number is 800-783-6112. And uh, reach out, let us know if we can help. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video from NorthShoreCommercialDoor.com. Please subscribe to our channel so we can continue to make content like this. Thank you.